fixing the money thing. I'm walking on a street here in Florida where they've just torn a house down. In fact, the house was there just a couple days ago. We'll look at it here in just a minute, but the lot where the house was is now open and completely available to build. Whoever owns it can now build what they want to build on it. Previously, of course, there was a house there, so you couldn't. This is exactly how it works in the kingdom of God. You know, Satan claims this is his territory and that we as believers don't have a right to be here. In fact, he's been, you know, lying about that forever. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians believe him when he intimidates them. But actually, the power of God has set us free to, to create and to realize that his house has been torn down. There's nothing there except open ground to plant, to build, whatever we want to do. The walls, to go back to the story of Jericho, held the Israelites out. They could not take the city, yet God said, take the city, yet the walls were there. But we find in that story that God brought the walls down, but the people still had to take it. You'll see this ground behind me is plain. You say, yes, we've won, we won the war, right? We, we, got, we got the building torn down. But tearing down the building isn't the answer. It's part of the answer. It's what, what are we going to do with that lot? What are we going to build? So when Jesus gave us the authority to go into the earth realm, he already stripped Satan of his territory, of his authority completely. A lot of believers like to celebrate the victory over Satan, but really the victory in this situation is what is this lot going to become? What, what beautiful house is going to be placed here for a family to live in? That's the story. That's the life. Yet, so many lives, so many Christians' lives look like this empty lot. They're celebrating that the house, Satan's dominion is torn down, but they don't know how to build they don't know how to build the future on the promises God gave us to take territory and occupy. We have a series we just finished up at church I'd like to bring to you right now. It's about these walls being torn down and taking you into a place of new vision, a place where you can see, yes, we acknowledge these, this structure is now gone, but we have to look past that to a blueprint, a picture of our future. And that's what this is all about. What territory are you going to take? The walls came tumbling down. That's what I heard growing up as a kid. I loved the story, but I didn't really know the impact. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to start in Joshua chapter 6. We're going to look right now, verse number 2. Then the Lord said to Joshua, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. Now, the Lord said this past tense. Obviously, they haven't even come to Jericho. And remember, Jericho was closed up because they heard of Israel's success, the Red Sea dividing. Here's this big army surrounding their city. They closed themselves off. And now they are nervous about that. But the Lord said, I see I have given Jericho into your hand. Note this. Write this down. Number one on your list should be God says. When God says something, it's already done. I mean, let's face it. If God says it, Who's going to override this decision? <laughs> right? Come on with me today. Right. So if God says it, and there's 7,000 promises in the Bible, and the Bible also says in Corinthians that every single promise is yes, yes and, amen. and amen. The Bible says we have to say amen. God says yes, so you don't need to beg anymore. In your prayer life, no begging. You already have it. He says yes. He says yes. But you have to say amen, which means so be it. I'll have it. So number one, God said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. His strength, his king, his fighting men are nothing. They're nothing for you. And then he goes on, march around the city, write the word instruction. So once you have a promise of God, if you're going to actually embrace it and actually see it in your life, big difference, right? Oh, I know a lot of Christians that can read and quote the promises, but I do not see them in their life. Okay, to get them in your life, you have to have instruction, right? Around the city, write the word place. Your destiny and your assignment is going to be tied to a place. A place. So destiny is a place. 
Now, there's a journey to get there. There's training, there's preparation. But ultimately, God has a plan for you to occupy a place. God has designed you to occupy a place. And that is a destiny that God is leading you towards. Okay, so Joshua, march around the city, place. If you don't know where you're headed, you'll never get there. (laughs) Once with all the armed men, right? With who? The people that travel with you are just almost as important as the assignment itself because the people you hang around will either motivate you to get it done or hold you back with distractions. You have to know who is with you, who should be on the bus, and who should be off the bus. So go with the armed men six days, have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark, On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priest blowing a lot of, next word, details. Details. So let's say you have a promise, you have a vision. Tell me the details. How many know people that have always have something they're going to do but never have the details? They never get there, do they? They never have the details. You have to have the details. All right, it goes on when you hear the the sound of the long blast of the trumpet, when you hear the sound. So timing is a word you're going to write down. You have the details, but you have to know when. When do I enact this plan? I have the plan. I have the details. I have the promise. I have the vision. I know where I'm to go. I know the place. I know who's going with me. But I need to know the timing when to enact the plan. Right? All right, very good. You're getting it. So the whole army gave a loud shout, the wall of the city collapsed, and then everyone went in and captured it. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, just a few verses down. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and the sound of the trumpet, uh, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in. They did what? They did what? Took the city. Now, here's what I learned growing up as a kid. I learned up as a kid that it was all about the walls came tumbling down. No one ever told me that the emphasis was not on the walls, but the city. See, the treasure's in the city. I have a lot of Christians who love to celebrate the power of Jesus Christ, but they don't take anything. They don't subdue anything. They don't bring it under the subjection of the kingdom of God. They don't occupy anything. Thus, they never enjoy anything. They're wandering still. And in the dream, remember I told you I had a dream on this trip. God said, the walls are down, friend. The walls are down. There's no more defenses. Satan has no more defenses. The king and his fighting men are defenseless. Take territory, Christians. Take territory. Invade planet Earth with the kingdom of God. Take territory. He cannot stop you. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's the King James Version. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Gates are defensive. They keep people out. When it says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, it means Satan cannot stop what the church is doing. He has no word of authority over the promises of God concerning your life. If God says you're prospering, you're healed, he has nothing to say about it. He cannot stop it. He cannot stop your prosperity. It's a, it's a sad fact that so many Christians seem afraid to launch out because they're afraid the devil's going to come after them. I'm afraid to step out because the last time I stepped out, all hell broke loose. Excuse me? Hell broke loose 2,000 years ago. Jesus destroyed it. Amen. <laughs> You're the enforcer of that. You need to remind the devil. You need to remind you have the, you're the, you're the change agent here, friend. The gates are down. You have been empowered, baptized in the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have his word. There is absolutely nothing that can stop you if God says go. All right, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them after his resurrection and said, all authority, say all authority, authority. in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go. What he's saying is before the resurrection, Before he defeated Satan, all he could say is all authority in heaven was his. But now that Satan was defeated, he says all authority in heaven and on earth is now his. Therefore, because of that fact, go. And he deputized the church to carry that authority in every man's world and to set people free and tell them about the new kingdom. All right? 
Jesus also said in Matthew 16, 19, that he's given us the keys of the kingdom, the authority of the kingdom. And he gave them to who? The church. You have the keys of the kingdom. You have the power, the Bible says, to bind, stop the enemy, and you have the power to loose what God's will is into the earth. Now, that's all introduction. Because I want to focus on, help you understand how most Christians think and help you think differently with this next thought, okay? Stopping the enemy is how most Christians view our authority. Stopping the enemy. You say, oh, pastor, what's wrong with that? I didn't say anything's wrong with it. I just said that's not all of it. John 10, 10 says, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what people think. I'm going to stop the enemy. I'm going to stop sickness. I have a right to be healed. I have a right to prosper. I have a right. I'm going to stop all these bad things the enemy's doing. And they don't read the rest of the scripture, which is, I have come, they may have life and have it more abundantly. Most Christians focus on stopping the devil instead of embracing life more abundantly. They don't know how to loose heaven. They don't know how to think in terms of, wait a minute, if the devil's done, the walls are down, he has no more authority, I don't need to be so concerned. That's just part of the kingdom, freedom from sickness, disease. I mean, where am I going? That's what I want to know. See, we love to celebrate someone being healed. We love to celebrate uh, someone getting out of debt. We love to celebrate someone's deliverance from addiction. That's all great, and it's part of the kingdom. But friend, that's not where it stops. You see, debt was just simply something that was hindering that person from reaching their destiny. Addiction is something that was just hindering that person from reaching their destiny. See, debt was something that was just hindering that person from dreaming of new things and reaching their destiny. Those are all hindrances. Yes, there's victory in that. Yes, we love to tell people that there's power in the name of Jesus to be delivered from those things. But someone's got to tell them about the land flowing with milk and honey. See, the the walls falling down at Jericho was not the victory of Jericho. What was the victory? The victory was they took the city. The walls falling was part of enabling them to take the city, but it wasn't the victory. The victory was they took the city. Satan does not care if the walls come tumbling down. I hate prefer them not to. But as long as he can convince you that you've already have you have it all and never venture in to take the assigned city where his treasure is, he could care less. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.